All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Naresh Mago and with me is Sarabjit Kaur. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's space sector can replicate the success of IT industry. Prime Minister to lay foundation stones for several development projects in Kutch region of Gujarat today. Centre issues guidelines for mass COVID-19 vaccination drive, first phase to include 30 crore people. Institutions of higher education to open in Uttarakhand from today and railways begins mega recruitment drive to fill 1.4 lakh vaccines. Vacancies. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. Now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the decision to open up India's space sector has heralded a new age of public-private partnership. Mr. Modi expressed the confidence that the Indian talent will achieve worldwide fame in the space sector the same way it did in the IT sector. The Prime Minister was interacting with key industries, startups and academia from the space sector via video conferencing to encourage their participation in space activities yesterday. Mr. Modi said, professionalism and transparency in policies as well as decision-making process of the government will prove beneficial for the companies joining the field. The Prime Minister assured the participants of complete and wholehearted support of the government in their efforts. Mr. Modi said India is making remarkable strides in the space sector, which has witnessed path-breaking reforms this year. The Prime Minister spoke of the space sector's significance in communication and navigation and expressed the hope that the country will soon become the manufacturing hub of space assets. Taking note of the plans of companies to make rockets and satellites, Mr. Modi said, this marks a big change that will further strengthen India's foray into the space sector. He said private investment in the sector will lead to the creation of high-tech jobs, which will provide a host of opportunities to the talent pool in IITs and NITs and other technical institutions. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Gujarat today to lay foundation stones for several development projects in the state. These projects include world's biggest renewable energy park being set up close to Indo Park border near Khavda village in Kutch district, a desalination plant, a fully automated milk processing of Sarhad dairy and a packing plant. Gujarat Tourism Minister Vasan Bhai Ahir has said that hybrid renewable energy park will produce 30 gigawatt solar and wind energy on a vast expanse of wasteland situated beyond India Bridge from Kavda village to Viga Court where civilian access is not permitted and the area is controlled by BSF and the Indian Army. He further said that Gujarat government has allotted huge parcel of barren land for this world-class, one-of-its-kind green energy project. Green energy generating corporates from private and public sector are being given land allotment to establish solar photovoltaic panels and windmills. Power Grid Corporation of India would be the nodal agency to channelize electricity generated here into Power Grid. The PM will also lay foundation stone virtually for a desalination plant coming up at Gundiali village near Mandavi in Kutch district. This plant aims to convert seawater for portable purposes for a population of 8,300 villages. Mr. Ahir also said that the desalination plant assumes great importance for Kutch Peninsula which is perennial rain deficit area with no other source of water. Prime Minister Modi will also lay foundation stone virtually for 130 crore rupees milk processing plant of Sarhat Dairy, an Apex Dairy Cooperative entity. This massive 2 lakh litre per day milk processing and packaging facility will come up under Rashtriya Kisan Vikas Yojana. Mr. Ahir also informed that the Prime Minister will also interact with people from different walks of rural life in a 10 city area in Dordo village in the White Desert. Centre has issued guidelines for mass COVID-19 vaccination drive in the country. 
the Health and Family Welfare Ministry is planning to vaccinate nearly 30 crore people in the first phase. Pfizer, Serum Institute of India and Bharat Biotech have applied for market authorization for their vaccines. The vaccination drive will start once the government approves emergency use of COVID-19 vaccines. The vaccines will be offered first to healthcare workers, frontline workers and to persons above 50 years of age. It will be followed by persons younger than 50 years of age with associated comorbidities and finally to the remaining population. The priority group of above 50 years may be further subdivided into those above 60 years of age and those between 50 and 60 years of age for purposes of phasing of rollout. Altogether, 20 ministries will be handling the entire process. The COVID Vaccination Intelligence Network COVIN system is a digitalized platform and it will be used to track enlisted beneficiaries for the vaccination and anti-coronavirus vaccines on a real-time basis. At the vaccination site, only pre-registered beneficiaries will be vaccinated in accordance with the prioritization. There will be no provision for on-the-spot registrations. The latest electoral role for Lok Sabha and Legislative Assembly elections will be used to identify the population aged 50 years or more. Twelve photo identity documents including voter ID, Aadhaar card, driving license, passport and pension documents will be required for self-registration on the COVID website. The national COVID-19 recovery rate has improved 94.98% in the past 24 hours. With 30,605 new discharges, the total discharge cases reached 93,88,159. With 27,071 new COVID-19 cases in 24 hours, India's total cases have gone up to 98,84,100. The Health Ministry said with 336 new deaths in 24 hours, the death toll has reached 1,43,355. The Himachal Pradesh government has extended night curfew in Shimla, Mandi, Kangra and Kulu districts till 5th of next month in order to contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The decision to extend the curfew was taken at a cabinet meeting chaired by Chief Minister Jairam Thakur in Shimla yesterday. The curfew in these districts will be from 9pm to 6am. The existing night curfew was imposed in these districts on November 23rd and was supposed to end today. Meanwhile, the state registered 12 more COVID-19 fatalities yesterday, taking the death toll in the state to 813, while 676 patients recovered from the disease, taking the total number of recoveries to 41,954. The total infection count of the state stands at 49,761. A total of 1,376 fresh cases of COVID-19 were recorded in Delhi during the last 24 hours, taking the total number of affected people in the city to 6,8,830. The Delhi government has said that over 5,83,000 people have recovered from the infection so far. In the last 24 hours, 2,854 people have recovered and 60 deaths were reported in the national capital, taking the toll to 10,074. Presently, the total number of active cases in Delhi is 15,247. The higher education institutions will open in Uttarakhand from today. The state government has issued the Standard Operating Procedure, SOP, in this regard. According to Chief Secretary Om Prakash, the students coming from outside the state will have to get an RT-PCR COVID test done. Only those who test negative will be permitted to join the institution. Students will also have to submit a consent letter from their parents. The SOP further states that nodal officers authorized by the respective institution and district authorities will ensure smooth functioning of the entire procedure. Both students and staff will have to compulsorily put on masks and maintain six feet distance in the classroom. The respective institution will see if required classes could be run in additional shifts to accommodate the students as per the SOP. The government has emphasized that preference should be given on conducting online mode of education. The institutes have been asked to ensure that students are provided with e-resources for studying. The colleges will continue to run online mode of classes as well. In Bihar, the number of active cases of COVID-19 is continuously declining. Currently, 4,975 patients are undergoing treatment at various hospitals. 
In all, 635 patients have recovered in the last 24 hours, while 425 new cases were reported. 2,37,372 patients have so far recovered from the infection in the state. Meanwhile, the COVID-19 recovery rate in Bihar has improved to 97.41%. This is 2.43% more than the national average. Madhya Pradesh registers decline in active COVID-19 cases. More than 2,8400 patients have recovered from the infection in the state so far. More from our Bhopal correspondent. Madhya Pradesh registers decline in active COVID-19 cases. As per Health Bulletin of the State Department, 1,084 patients recovered yesterday. 26,831 tests have been carried out yesterday, out of which 1,058 new positive cases were reported. Maximum COVID positive case 402 registered at Indore, followed by 203 at Bhopal. So far, more than 2,8400 patients have recovered from COVID. Puja Pivardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. In Odisha, the number of patients who have recovered from COVID-19 has increased to 3,19,458. On the other hand, a total of 3,24,089 persons have been infected so far. The active caseload of the state has come down to 2,767. Our Odisha correspondent has filed this report. The state is having an addition of less than about three to 400 new cases on a daily basis for the last few days. An equal or more number of recovery has successfully checkmated the virus. With the infection of the brain, various religious places of worship are thinking of reopening for the public for which the concerned district administrations are empowered to take a call on. The world-famous Sri Jagannath Temple in Puri is scheduled to be open for the public darshan with COVID-related riders from the 23rd of this month consequent upon the decision taken by the temple administration. Administration, along with the Chatishani Yog, the top body of servitors. Girish Chandra Das, AIR News, Bhavaneshwar. Talking to All India Radio, Dr. Madhur Yadav of Lady Harding Medical College, Delhi, has urged people to follow all precautionary measures to keep themselves safe from coronavirus. Our government, our health workers, our system is very important to control this pandemic. I would like to say that you can learn as much as possible about the vaccines, you can talk to people, and when you have a facility, please put the vaccine on your hands. And until the COVID-appropriate behavior, put the mask on your hands, keep your hands on your hands, and keep your hands on your hands. India has crossed a landmark milestone in its e-health journey. E-Sanjeevani Telemedicine Service of the Health Ministry has crossed 10 lakh teleconsultations yesterday. Telemedicine entails delivery of health services from a distance using the Internet, and it not only extends the reach of health services, but also improves the quality of health services besides saving time and money. The rollout of E-Sanjeevani is supposedly the first of its kind of digital transformation in the delivery of health services at a national scale by a developing country. The Ministry of Health, in a statement, said that during the COVID-19 pandemic, e-Sanjeevani not only brought about a huge digital transformation in delivery of health services, but also boosted the digital health ecosystem in the country. The Ministry said e-Sanjeevani is being used by patients in over 550 districts of India. Over 10% of the users of e-Sanjeevani are aged 60 and above. The new services division brings glimpses of the year that was in our special series, Year Ender 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic has been the biggest story of the year and India has seen a fight back against the disease under the dynamic leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The disease has thrown open new challenges and data management is a major learning experience in the health sector. A national digital health mission was announced by the Prime Minister on the 74th Independence Day this year. Under this mission, a unique health ID will be provided to every citizen, which will have details of the diseases, diagnosis, report and medication in a common database through a single ID. भारत के हेल्थ सेक्टर में ये एक नई क्रांति ले आएगा इलाज में आने वाली परेशानियां कम करने के लिए टेक्नोलॉजी का बहुत सुविचारित रूप से उपयोग होगा प्रत्येक भारतीय को हेल्थ आईडी दी जाएगी ये हेल्थ आईडी 
प्रत्येक भारतीय के स्वास्थ्य खाते की तरह काम करेगी आपके हर टेस्ट हर बीमारी आपको किस डॉक्टर के पास कौन सी दवा ली थी उनका क्या डायग्नोसिस था कब दी थी आपकी रिपोर्ट क्या थी ये सारी जानकारी इस एक हेल्थ आईडी में आपको समाहित की जाएगी स्पीकिंग एक्सक्लूसिवली विद एआईआर न्यूज सीईओ नेशनल डिजिटल हेल्थ मिशन डॉक्टर इंदु भूषण सेड The mission has been rolled out on a pilot basis in six union territories, and more than three lakh health IDs have been created. The mission has been rolled out on pilot basis in six union territories, and so far we have rolled out three power building blocks of National Digital Health Mission. Those are health IDs, doctors registry, and health facility registry. And under those, the IT infrastructure has been set up. More than three lakh health IDs have been created. More than two thousand doctors have registered, and more than one thousand hospitals have been registered. Our correspondent takes a look at how the new National Digital Health Mission will usher in a new revolution in the health sector. Providing adequate healthcare services requires a sound data management, and the National Digital Health Mission clearly fits the bill. It will digitalize healthcare by creating a countrywide digital health ecosystem. The patients can access and consent to share their health records with doctors and health facilities of their choice. This health account will contain details of every test, every disease, the doctors visited, and medicines taken, and the diagnosis. This information will be very useful as it is portable and easily accessible, even if the patient shifts to new place and visits a new doctor another important aspect is that the data will be secure so that it cannot be misused for commercial gains the mission is holistic voluntary healthcare program which will integrate doctors hospitals pharmacies insurance companies and make a digital health infrastructure the health id card is created with details like aadhar and mobile number and generate unique id for each individual the national digital health mission includes health id digi doctor telemedicine e pharmacy healthcare registry and personal health records digitally stored digital health cards will help doctors treat patients with their past medical history accessible the mission will also empower millions of citizens without smartphones or those in remote tribal areas facing connectivity issues to still avail healthcare through its offline modules the move is being seen as a game changer for the healthcare system of our country and go a long way in addressing the healthcare concerns of the needy the poor and disadvantaged alike with dipendra kumar suparna saikya aya news delhi the first covid-19 vaccination in the united states is taking place as the country gears up for its largest ever immunization campaign us president donald trump announced the administration of the first covid-19 vaccine on twitter sandra lindsay an intensive care nurse in new york is the first to, in the us to get the covid-19 vaccine after food and drug administration authorization The Pfizer BioNTech vaccine received emergency use authorization from the FDA on Friday. The US vaccination program aims to reach 100 million people by April next year. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's space sector can replicate the success of IT industry. Prime Minister to lay foundation stones for several development projects. in kach region of gujarat today center issues guidelines for mass covid-19 vaccination drive first phase to include 30 crore people institutions of higher education to open in uttarakhand from today and railways begins mega recruitment drive to fill 1.4 lakh vacancies for quick news updates round the clock follow us on our twitter handle at air news alert Indian Railways through its 21 Railway Recruitment Boards RRBs is organizing a mega recruitment drive in three phases starting today for filling up about 1.4 lakh vacancies according to the Ministry of Railways more than 2.44 crore candidates will be appearing in different cities across the country the ministry said the first phase of the exam will commence from 15th to 18th of this month for isolated and ministerial categories This will be followed by NTPC categories from the 28th of December to tentatively till March 2021 and the third phase recruitment for level 1 tentatively from April onwards till June 2021. RRBs have made extensive preparations for conducting examinations on this large scale in COVID-19 pandemic times following SOPs as laid down by the government ensuring social distancing, compulsory use of masks, sanitizers 
and curtailing shifts for conducting exams to only two shifts per day. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar has reiterated the central government's stand that it is ready for talks with farmers. Speaking to reporters in New Delhi after meeting the members of the All India Kisan Coordination Committee who had come from Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Maharashtra and Bihar, Mr. Tomar said the government will definitely hold talks if farmers' union's proposal comes. The minister said the intentions and policies of the government are towards the welfare of the farmers. ये कानून किसानों के जीवन स्तर में बदलाव लाने के लिए आए हैं इन कानूनों के पीछे भारत सरकार की नीति और नियत दोनों सही है और हम लोगों ने किसान यूनियन के साथ बातचीत की है उनको समझाने का भी प्रयास किया है और हमारी इच्छा है कि वो क्लॉज बाय क्लॉज चर्चा करें और हम लोगों ने जो अपनी तरफ से प्रस्ताव दिए हैं उन पर उनका क्या मत है वो व्यक्त करेंगे तो निश्चित रूप से हम लोग चर्चा को आगे बढ़ाए the All India Kisan Coordination Committee members submitted a memorandum to the Agriculture Minister in favour of the Farm Act. Minister of Road Transport and Highways Nitin Gadkari has appealed to the opposition parties not to politicise the farmers' issue. Talking exclusively to All India Radio News, Mr Gadkari said, Government is committed to the progress and development of villages, poor sections of society, labourers and farmers. He said it is not proper to oppose those steps which have benefited them. In the national interest, it is not good to politicalize this issue. Only I request all the opposition parties to don't politicalize this issue. Don't misguide the farmer. It is a time for the country that we should give them sustainable development, creating employment potential and also their right for survival is very important. We should support them. The nation pays homage to Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel on his 70th death anniversary today. He was first Deputy Prime Minister of India and also held the home portfolio. Fondly known as the Iron Man of India, he brought together more than 500 princely states with India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has paid tribute to Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel on his death anniversary today, who laid the foundation of an empowered, strong and prosperous India. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said that the path shown by him will always inspire us to protect the unity, integrity and sovereignty of the country. Home Minister Amit Shah has paid tribute to Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel on his death anniversary today. In a tweet, Mr. Shah said that the life and personality of Sardar Patel cannot be described in words. The Finance Ministry has released the seventh weekly instalment of 6,000 crore rupees to the state's to meet the GST compensation shortfall. Out of this, an amount of 5,516 crores and 60 lakh rupees has been released to 23 states and an amount of 483 crore and 40 lakh rupees has been released to the three union territories with legislative assemblies Delhi, Jammu and Kashmir and Puducherry, which are members of the GST Council. Maharashtra ATS has arrested a gang of eight persons in Mumbai who were supplying fake identity cards to Bangladeshi immigrants. According to an official statement, ATS received a tip-off and raided the premises of a Bangladeshi immigrant in Mumbai and seized documents and equipment used for making fake passports. Besides fake documents like Indian passports, Aadhaar, PAN card, forged rubber stamps and checkbooks, ATS also seized a huge amount of Bangladeshi currency, mobile phones, Bangladeshi SIM cards, Indian SIM cards and ATM cards. A virtual summit will be held between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Bangladeshi counterpart Sheikh Hasina on 17th of this month. External Affairs Ministry said that during the summit, the two leaders will hold comprehensive discussions on the entire spectrum of the bilateral relationship, including further strengthening cooperation in the post-COVID era. It said India and Bangladesh have continued to maintain regular exchanges at the highest level. Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, paid an official visit to India in October last year. Prime Minister Narendra Modi delivered a video message on the historic occasion of Mujib Borsho in March 2020. Both leaders have also remained in regular touch during the COVID pandemic. United Kingdom Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab arrived in New Delhi yesterday on a four-day official visit to India. During his stay in New Delhi, Mr. Raab will hold talks with External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar today on bilateral, regional and international issues of mutual interest. 
He will also have official meetings with the Minister of Environment, Forests and Climate Change, Prakash Javrekar, and the Minister of Education, Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank. As part of the visit, Mr. Rao will also travel to Bengaluru, where he will meet the Chief Minister of Karnataka on Thursday. Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy Research has signed an MOU with Sea Ganga, a think tank of National Mission for Clean Ganga, NMCG, for development of sludge management framework in India. On this occasion, Norwegian diplomat in India, Karina S. Jorsen, said Norway intends to deepen relationship with India, especially in the prevention of climate change and in conservation of environment. Secretary Jal Shakti Ministry U.P. Singh explained several initiatives in wastewater management and the need to develop further business modules by Sea Ganga and their Norwegian counterpart. Director General of NMCG Rajiv Ranjan Mishra said, we are working with the farmers to educate them about water use efficiency. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan and Acting Foreign Minister of Sudan Omar Gamar Aldin Ismail held a meeting through video conference yesterday. The meeting afforded an opportunity to comprehensively review the bilateral relations since the transitional government took office in Sudan. The External Affairs Ministry said that the two ministers had a brief discussion on respective national approaches in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. He said both governments have worked closely on the repatriation of each other's nationals through chartered flights. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. Srinagar will witness a partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was minus 2 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 9 degrees Celsius. In Jammu, the lower level of temperature was 9 degrees Celsius, while the upper level will be around 20 degrees. The city may witness a mainly clear sky. Leh may also witness a partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature dipped to minus 13 and the maximum will be around 2 degrees. In Gilgit, the temperature is expected to hover between 0 and 12 degrees Celsius. In Muzaffarabad, the mainly clear sky is expected with temperature between 1 and 13 degrees Celsius. In Dehradun, the temperature will hover between 9 and 23 degrees Celsius. Chandigarh may witness a mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 8 degrees Celsius. The maximum is expected to be 18 degrees Celsius. The national capital may witness moderate fog today. The minimum temperature was 7 and maximum will be 21. And in Hyderabad, the minimum temperature was 16 degrees Celsius. And the maximum will be around 31. Ahmedabad will see a mainly clear sky. Patna will see fog and mist in the morning and mainly clear sky later with temperature hovering between 13 and 25 degrees Celsius. And now an overview of today's newspapers. The extensive preparations going on for the COVID-19 vaccination program features on the front pages of newspapers. Vaccination protocol out, says the pioneer. Wedding halls, polling booths in vaccination plan, reports Hindustan Times. Armed forces forced PLA to retreat, Rajnath, reads a headline in the Statesman. India bravely stood up to PLA troops, forced them to go back, reports Hindustan Times. Business Standard reports that services from Google experienced widespread outages around the world, preventing people from accessing Gmail, YouTube and other products. The Indian Express reports as Air India bids close. Tatas and consortium led by staff in fray, multiple expression of interest, qualified bidders to be notified on January 5th. And finally, perhaps in a first of its kind, the Union Education Ministry has asked the University Grants Commission to encourage students to visit the tech marvel Atal Tunnel, the world's longest motorable tunnel in Rohtang, reports the pioneer. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's space sector can replicate the success of IT industry. Prime Minister to lay foundation stones to several development projects in Kutch region of Gujarat today. Center issues guidelines for mass COVID-19 vaccination drive, first phase to include 30 crore people. Institutions of higher education to open in Uttarakhand from today and railways begins mega recruitment drive to fill 1.4 lakh vacancies. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.